Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and Matty Malnick's orchestra. So, hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello! All right, all right, stop all that yelling. Where did you get that new car in the parking lot? Oh, I bought it from an old lady in Pasadena. I gave her $500 and a bonus. You had to give the old lady a bonus? Yeah. What was it? An old man. An old... <laughs> Talk sense, will you, Lou? Say, by the way, why is your Uncle Mike going over to that water cooler so much? He drank a gallon of water. Have it. I never saw a man as thirsty as Uncle Mike. He drinks about 10 gallons of water a day. Then at night, he goes into the living room, sits down in his favorite rocking chair. Mm, and then what does he do? He just sits there and rocks and sloshes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's because your Uncle Mike sailed on the ocean for so many years. Uh, he sailed all around the world, didn't he? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, yes. He got a lot of souvenirs, too, Abbott. He did? He's got a diamond from South Africa, a jade necklace from China, a whale bone sword from Alaska, and a hula skirt from Hawaii. Wait a minute. Where did he get that shrunken head? That's the barber's fault. He keeps putting those darn hot towels on him. <laughs> Costello, I think you're an idiot. I beg your pardon? I say I think you're an idiot. You can't say that about me, Abbott. My family dates back to the pilgrims. We're all blue bloods. Who cares about... About ancestors or heredity. I wouldn't care if my grandfather was a baboon. No, but it would make a lot of difference to your grandmother. Now, <laughs> <laughs> don't get smart, Costello, or I'll have to slap you down. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm just as tough as you are, and maybe tougher. I'm so tough, I could take Joe Lewis apart and see what makes him tick. I could take Jack Dempsey apart, too. Any champion your name I can handle. Oh, yeah. How about the swimming champ, Mr. Williams? Could you take her apart? Look, Abbott, anything put together that good don't need tinkering with. <laughs> oh, get him out of here. <laughs> yes, the boys are on the beam tonight. And they'll be back on it in just about one minute. But first, let's hear this. Costello. What? Look, come here. What's the matter with you, Costello? You look terrible. How did you get those circles under your eyes? Well, I didn't sleep good last night. My brother Pat came over to sleep with me, and he brought, his, he brought over his pet skunk and his two goats, and they slept at the foot of the bed. The air was terrible in that bedroom. Well, why didn't you open the window? What, and let my pigeons fly away? <laughs> why didn't you open the door? Every time I open the door, my pigs run out. Did you get any sleep at all? No, I stayed up until 6 o'clock in the morning reading the dictionary. You read the dictionary all night? Yeah, I couldn't wait to see how it ended. <laughs> you idiot. The next thing you'll be telling me that you're reading the Los Angeles telephone uh, directory. Uh, 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 that I wouldn't do. Uh, that's good. I'm waiting until they make a movie out of it. 
No wonder you can't sleep at night reading all that junk. Well, I'm not the only one who can't sleep. My Aunt May is up all night. What's she got, insomnia? No, before she goes to bed, she puts on face cream, hand cream, vanishing cream, body cream, and foot cream. Well, how does that keep her awake? She keeps sliding out of the bed. <laughs> We've got to move out of that house, Abbott. I haven't slept a night since we lived there. I keep looking out the window at that blonde that lives across the street. Why don't you pull down the shade? I can't reach across the street. <laughs> Shame on you peeking at blondes. I thought you were interested in Susan Miller. Louis. Well, no, I'm mad at her. She went in the store yesterday and bought a hat and made me pay for it. Why, you cheapskate. I'm a cheapskate, eh? You're a cheapskate, Abbott. Your wife told me that last week you sat in a cellar for three nights. Well, how does that make me a cheapskate? For ten cents, you could have baited the trap with real cheese. Right. <laughs> Just the same, you shouldn't object to buying Susan in a, a new hat. Oh, hey, after all, a hat is a woman's crowning glory. Oh. When a woman walks down the street, what do you notice first? Her figure? No. Her face? No. Her legs? No. You notice her hat. Look, Abbott, all the kids are in bed now. Let's give the right answer. <laughs> Just, uh, how do you manage how do you manage to increase your stupidity and ignorance? <laughs> I've been putting in a lot of overtime lately. <laughs> You wouldn't be so ignorant if you read the papers and kept up with what's going on. <laughs> I read the papers. All right, then, tell me. What do you think of universal military training? I don't think it's fair. Why? If universal is going to have military training, they should give it to RKO, MGM, Republic, Columbia, Monica, and Fox. <laughs> to say nothing of Eagle Line and Nassau Studios. You idiot. Universal military training is designed to put more young men in the Army. I hope if they put me in the Army, they'll give me back my old job. What's that? Deserter. <laughs> You were a deserter in the Army? <laughs> oh, I was just kidding, Abbott. I was one of the bravest guys in the Army. In all the battles, I was right where the bullets were the thickest. Where was that? Underneath the ammunition truck. That's what I thought. <laughs> I just threw that in. I should have thrown it out. Yeah, I think you should have. Oh, Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello. Say, would you like to go out on a double date with me tonight? Who are the girls? Well, there are a couple of hula dancers from Salt Lake City. They got hula dancers in Salt Lake City? Yes, with all that salt, they've got to have a few shakers. <laughs> How do you like that? He forgot to tell me where to meet him. <laughs> Look, why don't you get girls off your mind? Costello, the only thing that will cure you is marriage. I always like you until I got my wife on a string. On a string? You should have had her on a leash. I, <laughs> I don't want to get married anyway, Abbott. Married life is like driving the wrong way on a one-way street. Why? Everybody starts shelling at you when it's too late to back out. <laughs> anyway, I'm too young to get married. I'm only 21, and I don't know my own mind. <laughs> you don't know your, your own age either. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't know his own age <laughs> Show me in the script where it says that. It's not... <laughs> all right, it's not in there. Show me where it says that. Uh, it's not in there, that's Wait all. Wait till I get back. All right. <laughs> I'm here, now go ahead. All right, I just made it up, so what? You know, I like to get off a good joke, too. <laughs> you better get off that one before it hatches. <laughs> That's pretty good. If we keep this up, I can I can throw my script away. You're reading a script? I, <laughs> I understand that uh, Betty Grable asked you for a date last night. Yes, but I turned it down. Why? She's no Hedy Lamar, you know. Then why don't you go out with Hedy Lamar? She's no Lana Turner. Then why don't you go out with Hed Lana Turner? <clears throat> She's no Betty Grable. Wait a minute, Costello. We're right back where we started. I know, but look where we've been. <laughs> But why don't you... Why, why don't you quit chasing girls and propose to Susan Miller? I did have it. I took her for a ride last night and I asked her to marry me. Did she answer you in the affirmative? No, she answered me in the car. <laughs> Look, you dummy, when you proposed, you had hopes. Did her answer coincide with that hope? Why should she go inside with hope? She was sitting outside in the car with me. <laughs> Look, uh, Listen, Costello, please. Let Hope get his own girl. All right, listen, please. I'm only trying to find out How the about result. the girls we had last night, you and I? Oh, let's not talk about that. You got no kick coming. I'm not kicking. You had the best look of them. All right. Sir. Yours had teeth. All right. <laughs> you 
Yours had teeth, too. Did you see that tooth? Yeah, I saw that tooth. <laughs> Mine had so much bridge work, every time I kissed her, I had to pay toll. All right, let it go. <laughs> Look, I'm only trying to find out the result of your proposal. I'm always trying to find my place again, Tom. <laughs> I'm trying to find out the result of your proposal. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You say, you, you, you asked Susan to marry Right. All right. <laughs> All right. That's the line I was looking for. <laughs> that was a tough line to find. Right. Right. <laughs> um, well, sir, I'm trying to find out how you proposed. Were you uh, poetic? Poetic. Yeah. I was poetic. You were? I wrote her a beautiful poem. That's swell. Goes like this to Susan Miller. <clears throat> Susan, our marriage would be so dandy. As sweet as a five-pound box of candy. I'll be your pop, and you'd be my lolly. Just like Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, boys. Well, look. Look, Costello, it's Susan Miller. <laughs> Susan, you look wonderful tonight. Hmm. In parenthesis, sniffs. <laughs> Do I smell Christmas night? I don't know, Costello. I've never been out with you on Christmas night. Uh. <laughs> I'm out with them every night. That's <laughs> wonderful perfume you have on, Abbott. What is that? Uh, this here? Yes. Oh, Chanel. Ten dollars a bottle. Ten dollars a bottle, yes. Chanel. Get a load of this. What is that? Ketchup. Ten cents a bottle. No. <laughs> Susan, that's a lovely dress you're wearing. Thank you. I knitted it myself. It certainly clings, doesn't it? Yes, it looks like it's afraid to let go. <laughs> Susan, if you want to lend me ten bucks, I'll take you out tonight. Costello, I never lend money. Lending money breaks friendships. Money is the root of all evil, and you should never let money stand in the way of a friendship. Now, which would you rather have, the money or my friendship? Could you, could you let me have it in small bills? Shame on you, trying to borrow money from Susan. Here, I'll give you ten dollars. Now, where are you going to take Susan? To some high-class spot where we can rumba. Costello, do you know how to rumba? Oh, sure. Just get out of the, just get out on the floor and make out like you got a broken crankshaft. <laughs> how about it, Susan? Is it a date? Oh, I, I'm not going out with you on borrowed money. Get some money of your own. Why don't you get a job? Well, I had a job as a grease monkey, but I quit. Why? I found out you can't make no money greasing monkeys. <laughs> They're slippery little sons of guns. <laughs> Costello, why don't you say... Why don't you sell your invention? You can make some money that way. Costello, you have an invention? Oh, sure, a good one, too. I invented a new safety match. No matter what you do to it, you can't strike it. It won't light and it won't burn. <laughs> Well, what's a match like that good for? It's for people that don't smoke. <laughs> Say, Costello, why don't you take Susan down to the beach? That won't cost you any money. No? No money at all, huh? <laughs> well, nothing doing. I was down on the beach last Sunday. I fell asleep on a sand and butter. Did I get sunburned? Were you really sunburned? Susan, I was so red when I woke up, a lobster was trying to drag me under the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sissy. Why don't you take Susan to the beach? Nothing doing. Every time I go to the beach, I get hurt. The last time I went in swimming, the crab bit one of my toes off. Which one? How do I know? Those crabs all look alike to me. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Why don't you take Susan to the beach and stop all this following your all? Oh, it's no use, bud. Costello isn't my type. The man I want must be romantic. He must see me as a drifting boat without a sail on the storm-tossed sea of life. And he must pilot me into the harbor of matrimony. You don't want a man. You want the Coast Guard. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Costello, but the kind of man I could go for is the outdoor type. The type you see down at the beach. That's the guy that rings the bell for me. I knew it, Abbott. She's in love with a good humor man. Costello, I'm speaking of the lifeguard. Goodbye. Well, 
Costello, it looks like the only way you can win Susan is to become a lifeguard. I'll do it, Abbott. I can see myself now plunging into the sea, dragging beautiful, beautiful damsels out of the water to safety. I'll be the lock and var of Long Beach, the pride of Pismo, the octopus of Ocean Park. Now you're talking. There's only one thing that might hold me back. What's that? I can't swim. Oh! <laughs> And as the plot thickens, we'll ring down the curtain on the nonsense just long enough to bring you this message. Here's the second act. Curtain going up. Hey, Costello, here's Susan Miller and Matthew Malnick's orchestra. Yes, and here's a good place to use them. Here they are, folks, the musical talent of the Abbott and Costello show. This can't be love because I feel so well. No sign. No sorrows, no sighs This can't be love, I get no dizzy spell My head is not in the skies My heart does not stand still Just hear it beat This is too sweet to be can't be loved because I feel so well, but still I love to look in your eyes. My heart does not stand still, just hear it be. This is too sweet to be. Love because I feel so well, but still I love to look. Oh, yes, I love to look. I love to look in your eyes. Costello, I've got some good news for you. My <laughs> sister Olive is going to let you use her swimming pool. So you can learn how to swim and become a lifeguard. Who knows? You may turn out to be one of the greatest swimmers in the country. Yeah, but I'll be the next thing to Esther Williams. You dummy, Esther Williams is a girl. You mean you'll be next to Johnny Weismuller. You get next to who you like, and I'll get next to who I like. <laughs> All right, never mind. Let's go in this store. I'm going to buy you a bathing suit. Yeah, hey, Abbott. They got nice things in the store. There's a red bathing suit that would fit me. That's not a bathing suit. That's a suit of long underwear. Oh, shucks, and I was figuring on carrying my water wings in that big back pocket. Stop it, Costello. Oh, Clark! Uh, my friend Costello here would like to get a bathing suit. Uh, what would you suggest? Well, with his shape, I'd recommend a pair of trunks. Trunks? Yes. They're the only things that accommodate the excess baggage you're carrying. <laughs> Listen, you, I don't have to come into the store and have and get myself in solid. I can stay home and read my fan mail, you know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. Take off your shirt and coat and let the man measure you. Okay. 
Oh, oh, oh. There. My, my. I see you have some girls' pictures tattooed on your chest. Who are they? Well, three, three old sweethearts of mine. Sally, Irene, and Mary. Hmm. I only see Irene and Mary. I wonder what's become of Sally. Clay, come on. Will you quit stalling around Measure Costello? He's in a hurry. He wants to learn to swim so he can get a job at the beach. Hmm. A uh, lifesaver? No, thanks. I never eat between meals. <laughs> what kind of lifesavers I'm talking about save lives. That must be the new flavor. Sulfanilamide. <laughs> We have a seal out there. <laughs> now listen, Fat Joe. When I said you want to be a lifesaver, I didn't mean a lifesaver like the kind of lifesaver you buy when you buy lifesavers. I'm talking about the kind of lifesaver that saves lives. And that has nothing to do with the kind of lifesavers you buy when you buy lifesavers. Oh, you mean you're talking about the kind of lifesavers that you buy when you buy lifesavers. They have nothing to do with the kind of lifesavers that save lives and not like the lifesavers you buy when you buy lifesavers. Now you've got it. If I've got it, you better drop a net over it before it gets away. <laughs> Come on, Castella, buy the bathing suit and let's get out of here. <laughs> Oh, Brother Bud, I see you brought one of those blown-up rubber knife wraps. Oh! <laughs> oh, pardon me, that's Costello. Olive, uh, Costello's ready for you to teach him to swim. Well, Costello, I'm all ready for the pool. I put on this new bathing suit just for you. It's backless and strapless. How do I look? Skinless and boneless. <laughs> Olive, you look wonderful since you came out here to California. Ah, oh, yes, this California weather is wonderful. You know, I've got California under my skin. Looks like a part of Texas crept under there, too. <laughs> well, Costello, let's get on with your swimming lesson. Do you know anything about diving? No, but I used to go with a girl that was a pretty good diver. The only trouble with her was that she was so skinny, every time she made a jackknife dive, she cut herself in five places. <laughs> I remember her. She was quite a diver. Oh, yes. Once she dived off a hundred-foot board, just like that diving champ. Buster Crab. Not only that, she flattened the mackerel. <laughs> oh, boy. Susan Miller going to be proud of me. I got myself a job as a lifeguard. That's wonderful, Costello. How did you manage to do it? They hired me for three reasons. First, ability and intelligence. Second, courage and fortitude. Well, courage and fortitude. Well, what was the third reason? I was the only guy that applied for the job. <laughs> Castello, I don't know how you ever got that job as lifeguard. You know absolutely nothing about the water. Is that so? One time I swam five miles out in the ocean and suddenly I got a cramp and I couldn't move. How did you get back? Well, I got dizzy, and my head started to swim, and it brought my body back to shore. <laughs> furthermore, I was in the Navy, but they kicked me out because I like to sleep with the windows open. Why should they kick you out of the Navy for sleeping with the window open? I was on a submarine at the time. <laughs> you were in the Navy. You told me you didn't know how to swim. Well, I was only kidding, Abbott. Yeah. When I was a little boy, I used to go swimming in a pond near Patterson. And out of the city put up a sign on the pond that said, Lou Costello swam here. Who put up the sign? The Patterson Chamber of Commerce? No, the Patterson Board of Health. <laughs> Do you think you know enough about life-saving to be a lifeguard? I even learned all the lifeguard signal codes. They signal with whistles, like this. What does that mean? That means a child is in trouble. Now listen to this one. What does that mean? That means a woman is in trouble. Are there any more? Here's another one. What does that mean? Man, looking for trouble. <laughs> Here, I'll give you a practical lifeguard's test. Now, you're, in a, you're a lifeguard. Suddenly, you see four helpless people out in the surf clinging to an overturned boat. What do you do? I sit on the beach and read the funny paper. Why aren't you out there with those four helpless people clinging to that boat? There's no sense in five of us clinging <laughs> to that boat. <laughs> oh, talk sense. Let's... 
Let's get down to the beach. I want to get a load of you as a lifeguard. Hey, fat boy. Are you the new lifeguard? Yes, I'm the new lifeguard. Who are you? Who am I? Read the letters on my sweatshirt. S-L-O-B. Hey, Abbott, this guy's a slob. <laughs> no, 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 Costella. That's S-L-O-B. That stands for Superintendent Los Angeles Ocean Beaches. Superintendent, this, this, this is Costello. <laughs> oh, fine. Fine. Now, Costello, all the lifeguards on this beach use the Australian crawl. They use the what? Australian crawl, Australian crawl. Did you ever see an Australian crawl? I was in Australia for two years. They walked just like you and me. <laughs> One more question, Costello. Suppose you want to find out the, con the condition of the water. What do you do? Well, if I wanted to find out how the water is, I'd just call a dog. You mean a dog can tell you how the water is? Sure, I'll show you. Look, here's the dog over here. Here, doggy. Doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Come here, doggy. Doggy, how is the water? <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Costello, I think you'll make a fine lifeguard. Now, all you've got to do is pull beautiful girls out of the water when they're in trouble. The job is worth $60 a week. That's a little more cash than I have on me, but could I pay it in installments? Well, Costello, let's go down to the beach and see if there is anybody we know. <laughs> Costello, what are How you... do you do? What are you doing? Shaking hands with an octopus. <laughs> yeah, but look at that stunning blonde in that black bathing suit. Costello, if you were a real lifeguard, you wouldn't give that blonde a second look. You're right. I won't give her a second look. That's better. I ain't through with the fish look yet. <laughs> look, Costello, there's a girl drowning. Here's a chance for you to be a hero. Quick, swim out and save her. Okay, Abbott. Here I go. Watch me swim. <laughs> Abbott, I'm back. Costello, where's the girl? Girl, it's your sister Olive. She's out there fighting a the shark. Well, you're the lifeguard. You're supposed to help. He helped? Why should I help? That shark got himself into that trouble with your sister. <laughs> Let him fight his way out the best way he can. Get him out of here! Housewife down, boys. We'll have a curtain call by Abbott and Costello after a final reminder on this subject. Costello, as a lifeguard, you're a failure. Let's go home. We've gone on the beach all day. Look, Abbott, we're standing right on the spot where you buried your mother-in-law in the sand last summer. Well, what about it? Don't you think it's time you dug her up? Oh, good night. Good night, good night. Listen each Wednesday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda, and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick and his orchestra. So goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.